What's up, Eclipse shooters, viewers, Eclipse people? My name is Mac Laskowski, and uh, I hope I have a, I think I have a, a very different video for you here, because if you're like me, you've been bombarded about Eclipse stuff, from shooting and gear and filters and settings and all that stuff. And guys, I've never even shot one. I'm the last person that's gonna give you any more information on that stuff. Where I thought I could help was the editing part of this. And if you're thinking, I haven't even shot it yet, why do I need to edit? I'm hoping you'll continue to watch this because when you look at a photo like this, this is a composite that we do in Photoshop and it involves some thought process ahead of time when you're shooting. So in addition to being technically prepared, which I'm, I'm figuring you know, most of you are, um, I'm hoping that you're also creatively preparing for what do you wanna do with the photo? What's your end result? What are you hoping to get from this? And then um, hopefully when you see some of the examples I'll show you in this video, it gives you some ideas so that you don't walk away and you don't maybe change lenses in the middle of the, the shoot or, or, or camera angles or whatnot. And then something that could prohibit you from maybe putting together one of these composites, okay? So uh, so here, I'm gonna do two things for you guys. And number one, I got, a, uh, I, got, I got this video, but I got a webcast I'm gonna do after. It's called Photo Makeover Live Eclipse Edition. And if you've never seen my Photo Makeover series, it's basically where I take your photos and I edit them. So you'll be able to submit, it's free. Uh, there's links in the description there. And if it's afterwards, there'll be a link to the replay, but you'll be able to submit. And then I'll be able to go through, I'm not gonna be able to get through all of them, but hopefully I can give you a good sampling of some of the stuff that we can do, all right? And then of course you got this video here. I encourage you to watch it. Maybe start to think a little bit creatively about what's, uh, what's coming up here. Um, as far as the editing, there, there's basically three types that I see, three types of photos I see. It's not limited, but three main ones. There's the totality shot, um, which is, you know, just the, the, the total coverage. Um, I'm not going to cover that here. I'll do that afterwards. And if you do shoot it, I hope you bracket it and maybe submit some of those. Cause there's some, there's some techniques we can do in addition to HDR to bring all those together. Um, and then you've got that composite where you get all the different phases. This is like the telephoto shot. You know, you're zoomed way in, there's really no environment. And then there's an environmental shot where you get the different phases. This is an illustration. Um, probably not gonna get that if you're shooting this in, in America because um, the sun's gonna be fairly high up in the sky. But I think creatively, I'm interested to see, I love what people do. And I think some people are gonna come out with some really interesting environmental shots of this as well. Okay, so uh, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna do a, a Lightroom Photoshop version and on one version and an affinity version. Again, all the, the, the links will be in the description there. So let's go ahead and dive into the computer part of this. All right, so uh, we are here inside of, of Lightroom and um, I'll show you a Photoshop trick in a second for doing what I'm about to do here. But you can see I've got all the different versions. Um, so once you've narrowed it down to the photos you're gonna use, you can click on one, shift click on the other one. That selects them all. And then you go photo, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. And what that does is that basically stacks them all on top of each other into one Photoshop document. Okay, so they're all on, on layers in one Photoshop document. If you're not using Lightroom, you can go File, Scripts, and, uh, and go Load Files into Stack. Opens up a little dialog box for you here. You just go in here and select all the different photos, and it'll do the same thing that Lightroom did here. Okay, so, uh, so now we're into Photoshop. So a couple things that we're, we're probably going to want to do. I, I already know I'm going to need more canvas space for this because this isn't this isn't going to be enough area enough area to work with, right? I've got a lot of different versions um, of the the phases here that I want to get in. So a little trick is you can press the letter C for the crop tool, and then and then you can probably it's probably best like you don't want to be zoomed in. It's going to be difficult. So Command or Control minus to zoom out. Grab one of the handles on the side, drag it to the left. Grab the handle on the right side, drag it to the right. Hit enter or return. I've just added canvas space to the photo. So now I've got a lot more room to play. Only thing is, is I've got this weird background. So go to your background, your bottom layer, okay? If I just click add layer, it adds it on top and I can drag it below. Now, if I don't do that, if I hold down my command key on the Mac or control on PC, and I have that bottom layer selected. If I command or control click, you see it added it right below. So it's just a little shortcut tip to get you from, keep you from that, that second of dragging the layer there. And then just go edit, fill, and then you're gonna fill this with black. All right. Now, 
Let's go select our photo layers. I'm gonna click on one and then I'm gonna shift click on the other one. Cause here's the thing. I can't see below. So watch what happens. I can go take my move tool and I can drag this over here, right? Then I can go to the layer right below and I can drag it. But what, see how it starts to get hidden? It's getting hidden behind the layer that's on top of it. So what we can do here is I'm going to undo. We're going to click on one and shift click on the other one. I'm going to go to my blend modes because all these layers are targeted right now. I'm going to go to my blend mode and I'm going to change it to screen. Screen hides black. So if your background is black, it'll hide it. Now, again, and, and in the webcast, I'll talk about some different ways to do this in case you're not working and in case it's not all black. But you, when you were in your raw editor, Lightroom, a camera raw, wherever it happens to be, you just push your blacks. If that black isn't pure black, it'll get pretty close and just push your blacks to make it a little bit darker. And that'll make it a lot easier because now inside of Photoshop, because I just hid black, now I'm literally just working with all of the color in the photo. So I can take my, uh, take my move tool, I can move that over, take that next layer, move it over, take the next layer, move it over. You get the idea, like so, like so. Got the middle one here, let's go below that, spread that out a little bit. All I'm doing is just clicking on layers and just moving them to the side here. And I think we got one more right here. So now you've got all those, you've basically composited together all those different phases. If the blend mode trick isn't working for you, if, if you're working with different color or whatever, one of the things you can do is just use layer masks. So I could literally just go to this top layer and I'll change it back to normal and you'll see, see how it hides those two layers. So now I can add a layer mask to it, hit the letter B for my brush tool, set my foreground color to black, and now I can paint that layer in. Now I just need to go and I, I need to do it again, right? Cause I can paint that layer in, but now I need to add a layer mask to this layer below and it kind of builds and we're gonna get into that in the next example actually, cause we won't be able to use um, the blend mode there. Couple of offshoots I see on this. I'm gonna pull up my web browser. Uh, here's one from Adobe Stock. You can see it's kind of at an angle. Um, let me see here. Here's, I did a Google search on just solar eclipse photos and you can see there's a, a diagonal one. Um, you know, here's another one here. Here's another one here going across the sky. What I'll see sometimes, I'll see some versions where they will take the middle one and they'll just go one off, use your move tool and take it down a little bit then go one off on the other side and take that down, right? And then, then go two off and you take that one down even more. And again, go two off the middle and take that one down. You can use that little trick I showed you in the beginning to get more canvas size if you start running out of room down here, which we are. Um, another thing that I see is they'll make them smaller. So again, you get your middle and then we'll go one off from that. Command or control T for free transform. Click the little lock up here and then just change it to 90%, okay? And then you can go to the other one and then just go edit, go down here in the edit menu, go to transform and just do again. And you can see it made that one smaller. Now we'll go two off and then we do free transform. We can do 80% and then 70 and then 60. So they get smaller and smaller as they go away. So they're, they're, I, there's no really right or wrong if you're gonna do this composite. Uh, you, that's why I showed you a couple of different examples of, uh, of what you can do with it. Okay, uh, one last one. We're here inside of Lightroom. Let's go back to uh, a little bit more of an environmental. This again is an illustration. Okay, um, it's not, it's, you're not gonna be able to do this because it's not gonna be this close to the horizon line, but you can see the, the, the different mentality here is you're gonna put your camera on a tripod and you basically just leave it. Make sure you leave yourself enough room, you're shooting wide enough that you get all the different, you can just take different shots as the day goes on. Um, you leave the camera set on that tripod. So then you can composite all these together because everything is set and locked in and you can just bring in different versions of the sun where the other one was more telephoto, you're probably gonna have to follow the sun a little bit uh, across the sky there. So same concept on this one, click one, shift click the other one, photo, edit in, open as layers into Photoshop. We get over here into Photoshop, there's the document. So 
I'm going to give you a trick for this one because it, that layer masking gets confusing because you, you have to, every layer is masked. And as soon as you reveal one below, when you go one below that, the top one is still masking it. So you got to go back. It, it gets a little bit confusing. So here's a little trick for you. All right. You're going to go click on your top layer, then shift click on your bottom one, select the targets, all the layers here, and you're going to change it from normal temporarily down to difference. All right. Now I'm going to go to my top layer and I'm going to add a layer mask to it. Now I got a layer mask here. Get your brush tool, B for brush, set your foreground color to black. And what you're going to do is you're always going to go one layer past the one you're working on or one version of the sun past the one that you're working on. So this is layer number one. I'm actually going to go to the version version two of the sun and I'm painting with black and I'm just going to go down the line, paint over all of them. All right. Don't worry about how it looks. This is going to change when we go back to normal. Now I'm going to go to layer two, add a layer mask. All right. Remember I said you go one version of the sun past the layer you're on. So I'm on layer number two. I don't want to go to the version of the sun number two. I want to go to three. So I'm going to go to three and brush all the way down the line. All right. Don't worry about how it looks. Let's go to layer number three here. Again, one, two, three. So I go one more past that. Add a layer mask. This is four. One, two, three, four. Again, go one past it. And then one more time, add a layer mask. One, two, three, four, five. One past it, which is the last one here. It looks funky, I know. Now let's go back to our layer panel. Click on the bottom one, shift click on the top one to target all of them, change it back to normal, and boom. Everything looks good. So uh, it is a little bit convoluted. You can go the normal way with the layer masking. It just Again, you have to keep going back and forth between your layer masks and uh, and it starts to get a pain. So I found it just a little bit more easy and a little bit more visual uh, to go ahead and do it that way. Folks, hopefully that gives you a, uh, a little bit of inspiration and some creative ideas and some things you can do. You can also download the files that I used in here as well. So if you want to practice along and, uh, and regardless of when you're watching this, whether it's before the photo makeover eclipse edition and you want to watch live or even submit your own photos for me to take a look at um, or afterwards, all those links will be down there in the description. So hope you'll check it out. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you again soon.